Good afternoon, fellow peers. Today we are going to discuss bacteria in foods. As soon as bacteria is mentioned in the same discussion where food is also a topic point, many people think of the harmful bacteria. A common pathogen is Salmonella, which is a foodborne illness that is spread by eating raw poultry or unpasteurized eggs. However, not all food-related bacteria is bad. The good bacteria are often called probiotics, and they work with the human body. The food products that can contain bad bacteria need to be tested to ensure the product will not be harmful to the human body. There are many different methods to test whether a product is safe or not, such as cell culture. If a foodborne illness, such as Salmonella, makes it to the consumer, there are methods of deducing where these pathogens are by the use of biosensors. These biosensors can detect using optical, electrochemical and mass-based signals. Probiotic bacteria may be beneficial to your health. They are available in yogurt and various other dietary supplements. Lactic bacteria are used in many different tablets and capsules, sold as supplements in the health food industry. Meat starter cultures are used to make dried fermented products such as salami and cured meats. Lactic bacteria develop the flavour and the colour of the product. It would be impossible to make cheese without a starter culture. As the culture grows in the milk, it converts sugar into lactic acid which ensures the correct level of acidity and gives the cheese its moisture. As the cheese ripens, the culture gives a balanced aroma, taste and texture. Foodborne illness is caused by consuming contaminated foods and beverages. Many different disease causing microbes and pathogens can contaminate foods. Symptoms include diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, nausea and many more. The incubation period can range from several hours to a week. One type of foodborne pathogen is Salmonella. Once consumed, the bacteria make their way to the gut where it moves from the lumen to the small intestine. This leads to inflammation of the gut. Typical symptoms of Salmonella include diarrhea, fever, headache and lethargy. Foods associated with foodborne illness include raw meat. Fruits and vegetables can also be contaminated with animal waste such as when manure is used in production. Unpasteurized fruit juices can be contaminated by pathogens on the fruits used. Also, any food item that has been in contact with someone who is ill with vomiting or diarrhea. In food production industries, microbiological limits are set for food. This is the amount of counted or detected pathogen in certain size samples of food before it is considered unsafe. This varies between pathogens and susceptible food types. At the moment, the most common and accepted method by Australian standards are plate count samples. There are other methods to detecting pathogens in food, such as enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay and polymerase chain reaction. Cell culture or plate counting is when a sample is placed in certain conditions of pH, nutrients and temperature to encourage growth. The goal is to grow and find a visible bacterial colony of a target pathogen that can be observed. In Australian standards, plate count samples are incubated for 72 hours at 30 degrees Celsius before observation. It is the gold standard test method in microbiology. As mentioned, the test takes 72 hours to complete. Another method is the enzyme-linked immunoabsorbent assay, or ELISA. The most common application of ELISA is the sandwich assay. It takes advantage of the antigen-antibody binding affinity. Specific antibodies that can bind to the target pathogen are anchored into a microtiter well, and any matching pathogen from the enriched sample will bind to these antibodies. The sample is then rinsed away leaving the bound pathogens and antibodies in the well. More antibodies attached to enzymes are added, which will also bind, making an antibody-antigen-antibody sandwich that can be observed. This method is fairly accurate, but may have false positives due to cross-reactivity. The test takes 8 to 48 hours to complete, as it is highly dependent on the enrichment process time. A highly specific test method is the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. First, sample DNA is denatured via heat, which is split into separate strands. Next is annealing. 
The primer with a match to the target's pathogen DNA sequence anneals to the single DNA strand if the target is present. Then it is amplified, a polymerase from heat resistant aquabacteria, also known as tag polymerase, causes exponential amplification or replication of the bound DNA sequence. Finally, there is a detection. These strands of DNA are then analyzed and identified through several methods such as agarose gel electrophoresis, a process where DNA strands are sorted through a gel using electrical fields to move the negatively charged DNA in one direction. Shorter strands move faster than longer ones, allowing us to compare and identify the lengths of the DNA strands. PCR is highly accurate due to the specific nature of DNA to each organism and arguably more so than plate counting. The test takes 8 to 48 hours to complete. Like ELSIA, it is highly dependent on the time it takes to enrich the sample. Biosensors are potentially new technologies that may replace the old forms of detecting pathogens in food. Biosensors are analytical devices that contain a bioreceptor and a transducer, and can work on a whole range of biological molecules. The advantage of biosensors over traditional methods is that they are usually quicker, portable, multi-pathogen detection, and do not require pretreatment for lab research, analysis, and field work. Optical biosensors on an enzyme system which catalytically converts analytes into products that can be oxidized and or reduced at a working electrode and maintained at a specific potential. Optical biosensors can be categorized based on their function. It has a detection limit of 10 to the power of 2 to 10 to the power of 3 CFU per mil. The following is a list of pathogens it can detect and the detection limit of each one and advantages and disadvantages. Electrochemical biosensors developed for the simultaneous analysis of foodborne pathogens use electrochemical impedance spectroscopy as a transduction technique. Electrochemical can be categorized based on the measurements and changes. The detection limit of this method was as little as 10 CFU per mil. The following is a list of pathogens it can detect and the detection limit of each one and the advantages and disadvantages. Mass-based biosensors use piezoelectric crystals which vibrate at a certain frequency when induced by electrical signals of a certain frequency. Antibodies are embedded on the crystal. Once an antigen binds on an antibody that's on a crystal, it changes the frequency which correlates to added mass. There are two types of mass-based biosensors. The following is a list of pathogens it can detect and the detection limit of each one and advantages and disadvantages. The bacteria found in food can be helpful and work in unison with the human body, or they can be harmful to the human body. However, through the use of the different methods discussed, there are ways to test whether a product is safe or not. If that still isn't enough and the pathogen makes it to the consumer, biosensors can detect these pathogens with optical, electrochemical and mass-based signals.